Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Thank you for gathering us here again this morning in your name. Because we know we are gathered in your name and we are gathered to you. This gathering is unto you. Thank you for putting your glory on us. Thank you for putting your blessing on us. We appreciate you, Father. Show us your heart this morning. Bless us. Cause your face to shine on us. Cause your glory to over, over, overwhelm us. Cause your glory to overshadow us this morning. Give us grace. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we've prayed. Glory to Jesus forevermore. Mr. Marsh, how are you? I missed you. Like, come and greet me. I missed you. I missed you. Where is Ebube? You are back from break, Abi. Stamarachi, you are back from break. You are back from break. You went, you went on holiday. I know you were on break. Now I didn't see you now and I missed you. I mean, you are back now. I'll be seeing you very well every time. Don't let me miss you again. <laughs> Glory to Jesus forevermore. You see, church is family, like, like I always told you, right? Like I've always told you. Church is what? Family. Yeah, family. We love one another. We ask after one another. We give to one another. We care for one another. Do you understand? It has to be real. Do you understand? Church is not where you come and just sing and pray, listen to someone and go. No, 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 no. Church is family. There's real interaction. It's real people relating with real people. Are you following me? Are you following me? And fellowship with a real God. A real people fellowship with one another and with a real God. You understand? Real people meeting real people, meeting a real God. It's real. Amen. Glory to God. All right. So, count it all joy. Glory to Jesus. Olamide, it's good to see you. This is how it has to be. You leave them. You don't, you understand? You didn't come to this world together. Olamide, do you understand? Can you hear me appreciate Olamide? Hear me appreciate Olamide. So, you didn't, you didn't come to this world. Did you come, to, all of you, did you come to this world together? <laughs> So you follow Jesus alone. That's how it has to be. Leave the house. Leave them alone. Just come to church. God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. So count it all joy. It has been an amazing conversation. Amen. Demola, I missed you. What happened? And your phone number, I tried your number. It was switched off. I'm happy to know you are alive. That you are alive is even good news for me. And you're in, well, your eyes are closed. What does that mean? Did you, did you fight? You fight lion? Okay, yeah, sit down. <laughs> Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Amen. James, a servant of God. No, give me KJV. I've not yet matured to NKJV. <laughs> I'm still at this level, KJV level. The people who have matured, <laughs> senior apostles, I go, I do NKJV. <laughs> James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. To the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. Well, I love this verse one. How many of you were here when we did verse one teaching? Kai, who can remember the Greek word? What was the Greek word? Cairo. Demola. Cairo. Cairo. Amen. Shout hallelujah. I think we'll do another teaching. We'll do. We'll now we'll, the teaching will be Cairo. We'll come back to this game chapter one verse. I love it. Greeting. Okay. My brethren, count it all joy. When you fall into diverse temptations, okay? Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, and not breed it not, and it shall be given him. So we are on verse 2. Go back to verse 2. So we've looked at greetings in the midst of scattering. That's the verse 1. That. You can't post life because you are going through stuff, right? He says, to those that are scattered, greetings. They were scattered. Things were happening in their lives. Strange things. But he says, you can still greet. So don't post your life. That's why you, that's the, the word there is Cairo, greeting. You can still greet. You can still do life. So that's the part one of this teaching. Go and find it. Then we looked at the certainty of trials. That's still from verse 2. My brethren, count it all your when. So look at the certainty of trials. That the believer will certainly go through trials. So, let's now look at our attitude in trials. Amen. 
praise God forevermore. You see, you need to appreciate the fact that there's an end for all our trials. Are you following me? There's what? There's an end for all our trials. I mean, what I mean by end is not that there's a time our trials will end. Of course, that is true. Are you following me? I'm saying there's a goal. Hmm? So there's an end for all our trials. And you know what's beautiful about this end? It is a glorious end. Amen. Praise God forevermore. I said what? It is what? A glorious end. There's an end for all our trials. Are you following me? And it is a glorious end. But you see, these apostles are very, very sound people and highly spiritual people. Because you see, they are going through tough times. They are going through trials. Are you following me? It's not proof that you will end up gloriously. So that's why we are looking at our attitude in trials. Amen? So, there's an, attitude, there's an end for our trials. It is a glorious end. But what guarantees this end are not the trials in themselves, but our attitude in the midst of our trials. Can I come again? There's an end for all our trials. It is a glorious end. What guarantees this end and not the trials in themselves, but our attitude in the midst of our trials. Amen. So you see, every trial you go through as a child of God, has what? An end, a goal, a destination. Amen. And this end, the end of all our trials as God's children is what? Is a glorious end. Is that it will end in glory. Are you following me? Guys, you need to appreciate the fact, you need to be convinced in your heart. You need to be persuaded. Are you following me? That it doesn't matter what you are going through presently. It doesn't matter the challenges. It doesn't matter the hardship you are going through as a child of God. Are you following me? You need to be persuaded that it will end in glory. Are you following me? Child, hallelujah. You need to be persuaded that it has a glorious end. Are you with me? But you see, what guarantees this glorious end is not just that, oh, I'm going through trials. I know one day, one day, one day, it go better, it go better. It's not, it will not better. It's that you'll be battered. <laughs> are you with me? So, because you are going through, you know some people think because they are going through hard times that they just feel that one day, that one day, one day, Things will work out. Are you following me? That what will be, will be to not be. Are you with me? You see, as a child of God, you must appreciate the fact that your attitude in the times of your trials are very important. And your attitude is the determinant, is the determining factor. Are you following me? Whether or not you will eventually come into that glorious end. Are you with me? Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. You see, trials will not pity you, pity you, pity you, pity you that, oh, this boy has suffered too much. He has gone through a lot. We are coming to glory. No. God won't pity you like God who is your father. He won't pity you that, hey, my child, oh, he has suffered, oh, he has suffered, oh, he has gone through a lot. Oh, yeah. And young girl, he has logo. They don't do like that. That's why the apostles took out their time to lay down doctrine. Are you following me? So that your trials will not be in vain. The apostles took out time to teach us these things so that we will not suffer in vain. You see, a child of God can suffer in vain. Are you hearing me? A child of God can do what? Can suffer in vain. But actually, the plan of God, the end of God for your suffering, for your trials, is that what? It should end in glory. But, you can suffer in vain. You see? And the difference, are you following me? Between suffering in vain, are you following me? And or going from suffering to glory is simply your attitude in the midst of your sufferings, in the midst of your trials. Are you with me? So, how you behave 
when you are going through tough times, how you behave in the days of trials, are you following me? Is what determines, is what guarantees whether or not you will come into a glorious end. And the apostles understood this truth. So James was writing to show the believer the right attitude, the right heart posture he must have in the days of his trials, in the midst of his trials, so that he can be sure of a glorious end. So that he can be guaranteed of a glorious end. Because the apostle knows that you see that you are suffering does not mean you are going to be great. They are going through a lot does not mean you are going to be great. They are going through a lot of trials does not mean something good will come out of it for you. That the most important thing for you as a child of God is your attitude in the days of your trial. Are hey, you with me now, my friends? And that's all we, are, we, 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 we want to begin to look at this morning. Our attitude in trials. How should we behave? Are you following me? You see, are you with me? Satan does not only want you to suffer. Are you with me? He doesn't just want you to go. He, 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 he not only wants you to go through trials. He also wants you to behave improperly in the days of trials. Are you with me? Are you following me? Satan wants to behave improperly, inappropriately. He wants you to have the wrong attitude in days of trials. Are you following me? For example, Jesus was hungry. Don't go there just on this scripture. He, he, was, he fasted 40 days and he was hungry. So that was a kind of trial, right? Satan came and began to introduce wrong behaviors to him. Are you following me? So that if he behaved wrongly, are you following me? The end of what he just went through. Are you following me? Which is supposed to be glory will not happen. Are you following me? So you see, in the spirit, your attitude is important. Are you with me now, my friends? In the spirit, they check your attitude. How is he behaving now that he doesn't have money? How is he behaving when, now that things are tough? What is his attitude? What is his heart posture? You see, God cannot write Satan, like overpower him, like Satan, keep quiet, you are my son. You see, if you behave, let me explain what I'm saying to you. If you don't behave properly in the days of your trial, God cannot say, I am God. Satan, leave my guy. We are just coming to glory. No, he can't do that. It's a spiritual principle. Are you following me? You enter from trials, from suffering to trials. Are you, I mean, you enter from trials and sufferings into glory. Are you following me? Because you have behaved properly inside trials. Are you with me? Joseph would not have gone from the prison to the palace if he had not behaved properly in the days of his trials. Are you following me? Praise God. The Bible says that until his word came, the word of the Lord came and tested him and tried him. Are you with me? So you need to understand, my friends, that your attitude is so is of great value in the spirit. Are you following me? You see, some people, because they are going through a lot, their attitude change or changes. Are you following me? They start misbehaving in different manners. And they are hoping that one day they will come out of that suffering. No. Are you following me? You are only sure of coming out of your trials, coming out of your sufferings into a glorious state because you have behaved properly in the midst of your trials. Glory to Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. I wish you together. Amen. We will miss the glorious end of our present trials if you don't have the right attitude. Are you with me? I said what? We will miss the glorious end of our present trials if we don't have the right attitude. Are you with me? You see, prayer points won't bring you as it were. Prayer points, as it were, are you following me? Won't bring you out of trials and bring you to a glorious end. Are you following me? It is your behavior. Are you following me? You see, and part of the behavior is that you don't stop praying. You see, do you know some people are going to trials and they stop praying because of that? They stop coming to church, they stop following the Lord. Do you know that's the kind of behavior? Are 
Are you with me? Shout hallelujah. So, we are going to miss the glorious end of our trials. Are you following me? Of our present trials. If you don't have what? The right attitude. I'm not trying to read key points for you before I now open the scriptures. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Praise God. So having said all of this, the apostle now begins to show us what kind of attitude should we have as believers in the days of trials. Are you following me? Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Like what? What kind of attitude should we what? Have what? As Christians in what? In days of trials. That means there is a particular attitude expected of us as God's children. There is a particular way we are expected to behave. There is a particular attitude expected of us in the days of our trials. And it's not hidden in, from the scriptures. It's not hidden from our face. It's there in the scriptures. So the apostle says what? Count it all joy. When you fall into what? Diverse temptations. What is what you should do? So what's the attitude here? Tell me. Who can tell me what's the attitude here? Joy. The apostle says that the only attitude, are you following me? That is expected of you in the days of trials, are you following me? Is the manifestation of joy. Are you with me now? Is what? Is the manifestation of joy. And that if you don't have this attitude, you would have suffered in vain. Like, if you don't manifest during the days of your trials, you're not coming to the glorious ending. So, manifesting joy in the midst of our trials is the attitude that guarantees that we will come into a glorious end. Are you with me? What did I say? Manifesting joy in the midst of what? Our trials. Is the attitude that guarantees that we will come into what? A glorious end. Are we still together? Amen. My brethren, count it all joy. So, it's as if the only thing to do in the days of trials, are you following me? Is to count it all joy. Is to just manifest joy. This is as a privilege to be joyful. This is as an opportunity to rejoice. You see, and you're going to understand what it means to count it all joy. Are you following me? It's not something, it's not hard. Are you with me? So the apostle says, the attitude you must have as a child of God in the days of trials is what? Is to manifest joy. Is to do what? Can you say manifest joy? Manifest joy. We need to manifest joy. You see, the world has to go crazy seeing our joy. Are you following me? Someone that does not have a problem as great as yours has to begin to think, rethink his life when he sees you with so much problems but with so much joy. He needs he need to start having a rethink. Are you following me? We need to bring back a powerful Christianity where a people can be beaten and they rejoice and count. You, you understand? They rejoice for being counted worthy to suffer for his name. Are you with me? Where people can rejoice in the midst of affliction. That is powerful Christianity. Not the Christianity where because of some things that happen to you, you already draw back from the Lord. You already draw back from the community. You already cold. You don't feel like following the Lord again. Oh no, they show, they show. Don't worry, they show my father. They just say, father. You think they send you? The fact that you even say, walk father, eh? Oh, they want to know more. Walk father, see him alone. Father, but they take father and see you. Because you're already having the wrong attitude. That kind of statement or behavior cannot, is not one of joy. It doesn't come from joy. Are you following me, my friends? So, manifestation of joy, the apostle says, is the attitude we must have in the midst of our trials. Are you following me? And the apostle is so clear, so sure, that when we have this attitude of joy in the midst of our trials, it's so certain that we are going to come into what? A glorious end. Praise God forevermore. 
You see, and this is a serious kingdom principle. Are you following me? Peter again came to say the same thing. Look at First Peter. First Peter chapter, glory to God. First Peter chapter 4 from verse 12. First Peter chapter 4 from verse 12. Glory to Jesus. Are we there now? Amen. Let's read. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. As though some strange thing happened unto you. Are you following? Go to the next verse. We'll come back here. But what? I can't hear you. What did James say you should do? Were they writing the letter together? Were they sitting down together? Were they sitting down together? Did they copy themselves? They were speaking the mind of God. This is the protocol. Are you following me? This is how to, from trials, enter glory. This is the protocol for it. Are we still together? This is kingdom principle. This is the protocol. You see, you need to understand this, your Christianity. This kingdom life is built on protocols. Are you following me? It's built on what? Protocols. If you can follow those protocols as they are outlined in the scriptures, are you following me? You're going to have a beautiful life. It was me now, my friends. But rejoice! So again, another apostle is telling us that the way to behave in the midst of trials is the what? Still rejoice. Amen. But rejoice in as much as you are particles of Christ's sufferings that when the glory shall be revealed, you may be glad of the soul enjoy. Go back to verse 12. Glory to Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. As though some strange, strange thing happened to you. You don't, you don't understand. Like, how can you look at people and say they are to be tried by a fiery trial? You see, the word trial itself is already fiery, right? It's trial not fiery. You now, you now qualify it again. It's a fiery trial. <laughs> you don't understand. Like, trial itself is not good. Are you, are you following me? We all don't want to go to trial. But trial is part of the curriculum, like I've taught you, right? So if trial itself, itself is not even good enough, like it's not enjoyable, you are now calling it another, you are saying fiery trial. And you are saying the way I should behave is to come to this job. But look at, he said, think it not strange. Are you following me? You see, that means in the days of trials, there's a general thought pattern in the heart of the believer. He thinks it is a strange thing for him to be going through trials. Don't worry, you understand. Thinking also concerning the French trials to try you, as though some strange, some, as though some strange things happen to you. You know, some people believe that they think that God, how can this be happening to me? And I'm your child. I'm a Christian. How can this happen to me? I'm paying my tithe. I'm committed in church. Like, how can this happen to me? I'm a new creation. I'm all of that. They are thinking it's strange. Some people think that as a child of God, that having trials is strange. Are you following me? That how can, how can there be challenges in my life? How can I have problems, these kind of problems? How can there be fiery trials in my life? And I'm serving God. Are you following me? He says, think it's not strange. That means there's the first natural behavior. Are you following me? From the child of God is a natural behavior. But the apostle said, we must not turn to this behavior. Are you following me? So there's a natural tendency to want to think that why, sh- why me? You understand that question? That God, why me? The apostle says, don't, don't think in this way. He said, this is bad thinking. Are you with me? God, why me? God, when? God, why me? He said, this is bad behavior. That, you see, we need to, he said, we need to take, take our attitude in the midst of trial. And he says to think that it is strange. 
to go through stuff as a child of God. He said, it is bad behavior. He said, don't think it. Like, don't think like that. So you see, when you are going through trials, one of the things you must deal with, you must pay attention to is your thought pattern. Are you following me? Because you see, one of the things Satan tries to attack when you are going through tough times is your mind, your thought pattern. Are you with me? Are you still following me? Well, I'm telling you the truth. One of the things Satan tries, one of the things Satan tries to attack when you are going through hard times, when you are going through tough times, what? Your mind, your tough patterns. Your thought patterns. Like, if you were the son of God, if you were this, why don't you turn the stone to bread? Like, if you were the son of God. Oh, you, you, you really think you are, you are God's son? You really think so? You really think, you really think God counts you as his son? Okay. If you are truly his son, turn the stone to bread. Thought patterns. Are you understanding it? Do you understand? Do you understand? Praise God. Shout hallelujah. So Satan wants to at- attack your thought patterns in the days of your hard times, in the days of hardship, in the midst of trials. Are you following me? So he begins to inject strange thoughts into your mind. That God, why me? Maybe God has even forsaken me. Maybe God has forgotten about me. Now, that why, why should I be going through these kind of things? I'm a child of God. I'm committed in church. I'm fervent. I do my quiet time. Now, why me? God says, because it is you. <laughs> Are you following me? So, to think it, you must deal with your thought. It is not strange for you to go through trials. Can you say it is not strange for me to go through trials? He said, it's not a strange thing. You understand? He said, like, it's a big deal. Okay. You understand? He said, it's a big deal. What the, what, the, what the apostle is saying here is that what? I never get money. No be what? No be big deal. Can you say no be big deal? I never get moto. No be big deal. You understand? I never build house. No be big deal. I never get babe. No be big deal. <laughs> I never get bobo. No be big dig. <laughs> Why are they hiding their faces? Are you with me? Do you understand? Satan wants you to make a big deal out of your problems. Are you following me? Did you hear what I said? Satan what? Wants you to make a big deal out of your problems. Because you see, if you can make a big deal out of your problems, Satan can distract you. From following the Lord. Are you following me? Because your problems now, if you because you see, if you make a big deal out of your problems, if Satan can get you to make a big deal out of your problems, your problem now becomes a big deal. Are you following me? It becomes big, it becomes a mountain. It now becomes what you see before your face. Like it becomes your reality, like it overshadows your God. Your problems now becomes your God. Are you following me? Praise God. That you don't even have time. You know, you know some people are following. They don't even have time to think about God again. You understand? They don't have time for God. They don't have time for anything that relates to God. Why? They have problems. You know what has happened? They've made a big deal out of their problems. So their problem has now become their God. It's now become what they are worshipping. Are you following me? So, Satan wants to make a big deal out of your troubles, out of your problems. He wants to begin to worship your problems. Are you following me? Praise God. So, you have to tell yourself that it is not a big deal. So, Satan looks at you and says, with all your experience, with all your skill, by now you should be doing a job of $10,000 per, per month. I see, you are still struggling with, it's a job of 20k. Now what's, what's wrong? You say you are a child of God. You are skilled, you are skillful, you are experienced, all of this, you are, you are this, you are that, you are even fervent, you are serving God. You sure? What should you tell him? No be big D. You understand? Can you say no be big D? No be big D. I've not eaten. No be big D. There's no food in my house. No be big D. There's no meat. No be big D. There is no fish. No be big deal. Do you know why there is no big deal? Do you know why you have to say no be big deal? 
Because one day, it really will not be a big deal again. Because those things you lack will now come in abundance. And you will see it. Are you following me? As we, be, as we next week, I, I pray I'm able to finish this today. We'll look at the product of our trials. Are you following? After our attitude in trials, the next thing is the product of our trials. You, you see? Hey, are you with me? You see? The things that are appearing to you as a big deal and the things you lack, that are your problem, that are appearing to you as a big deal, you will have them, you will be tired. Are you, are you following me? It's like that, it's like that girl sometimes ago, maybe she didn't pay her school fee. He said, then go flog, 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 then go tire. I go get money, get money, get money, get money, I go tire. <laughs> are you following me? Are you with me? Are you following me? Are you following me? Those things that Satan is painting to you as a big deal now. Are you following me? You have to tell him that it's not a big deal. Because actually they will not be a big deal. Because now, what is happening is that you lack them. Hey, but if you behave properly now that you lack them, the problem there will be that they are too much. Are you following me? You see, hey, the lack you are experiencing now, the problems you are experiencing now, the difficulty you are experiencing now, are you following me? If you can ensure not to make a big deal out of it, if you can ensure to behave properly, to, to, to exude joy, to exhibit joy, are you following me? Your problem later, when you come into the product of your trial, the real problem will now be that these things are now too much. You understand? You now start singing. Little money. No, what's the money? Little money to spend in Tobalo. You can't pay the jembe jembe. Too much money, have you? I'm about to come here. Ah, those those days I I I used to know those songs very well. Eh, money, eh? Ah, eh, ja, eh, ja, eh, ja. They do that, they do that, they're spending. They do that, they do that, they do They are pretending, they are pretending. I know they are pretending. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Ay! Usha. Guys, can I talk to you? Can I talk to you? That thing you lack now, which is your problem? Are you following me? It will give you problem later. <laughs> do you understand? And what problem will it give you? It's too much. Like what do I want to do with it? Like in Mofen Fishie. Okay, God, you brought you brought another car. Like what do I want to do with it? In Mofen Fishie. God, okay, you've brought new box of clothes. What do I want to do with it? You've brought new shoes. What do I want to do with it? Are you following me? Are you with me? But it won't bring new babe. It's only one babe. <laughs> only one babe. Can you say only one babe? Say only one babe. You just be loving the babe and new. It it will become new, new every day. They are new every morning. Say only one babe. I can't hear you. Say only one babe. Only one bobo. <laughs> Are you with me? Praise God. Your problems are not that great. You don't say they are not that great. Your problems are not that great. Your problems are not great. It should come whine, Amy. You understand? Because he wants to behave inappropriately. He wants to stop coming to church. He wants to stop following God. He wants to stop being committed. He wants to, he wants to neglect your community. He wants, he wants to just, he wants to be selfish. What you are just, you are just trying to keep it for yourself. Because you feel you don't have enough. He wants to behave badly. <laughs> Guys, and I'm telling you the truth. Oh. You remember we looked at this on Thursday that you come to that land where you don't lack anything. Guys, I'm not lying to you. All these things that, that is shocking you that you're afraid that you want to be careful. That's why I'm making you look as a big deal. Hey, I don't have a car. Hey, rain beats me and my family. Oh, God. It's not a big Tell him it's not a big deal. Because really, it's not a big deal. Because very soon you'll be confused that he won't even bail on church learning. Go. She bends near be Ferrari. <laughs> you understand? I'll be Bentley. I'll be Ford. Like, which one should I he won't even take bail Okay. My be Benz law, but he won't even take bail on me. You know that? Like, ah, 
Okay, mo gbe best for church. Okay. Mi o ni gbe best in Olim. You know that? Because you are going to dash right there in service after service, you are going to hand over that key to somebody else. And tell them to go and bring another car for you in the house. You understand? So you don't need to say, oh, you are already thinking, which, which, which one should they go and bring to, to take you? Are you with me? Guys, do you know, I mean in this church, you come to church with a very nice car, and you drop the key for somebody else. Oh, you don't believe me. These people don't believe their pastor. <laughs> I'm telling you the, the things that will happen. These people I'm looking at are billionaires. Because we need money to propagate the kingdom. Don't let, don't let anybody lie to you. Are you following me? We can't spread this kingdom without massive wealth. And we are going to spread the kingdom in this church. So we are going to handle massive wealth. Are you following me? Well, that you just bought a recent car. Maybe 2023. This is 2023, right? You bought a 2023 Benz. GLE. Are you following me? And you are so worried you came to church with you and you just thought in your heart. You don't even need to be ministered to by the Lord. You don't saw a brother, this guy needs a car. You just hand over the key to him. You don't understand. Cars of millions of naira. And he does not shake. He doesn't, it's like you are, it's like you dashing a bottle of water to somebody. Are you with me? But now, but now Satan is making it look like a big because you are still entering down for. And some of you are even blessed like I won't take Uber. If you can take Uber, if you have taken, if you have taken, taking boat or Uber, you raise up your hand. You are blessed though. Do you know some people in their life have not taken Uber before? Like, so, <laughs> Ewa has taken Uber several times. <laughs> Amen. Like, do you know some people have not taken boat in their life before? And some people, some people it's, it's, it's rather because of stinginess. They feel, ah, but a 5k from here to Ojo, do 5k. Timba from here, Timba where, Timba where, Yanokbaja, Yanokbaja 500. My friends, they're in there, the garage. I want 1,000. I want 1,000. So some people are having bad life because they are stingy. They don't even understand this wealthy God that they are serving. Guys, you have to spoil yourself sometimes, though. You understand? Deliberately take Uber to the place. <laughs> you have to be planning for greatness. Can you say plan for greatness? You have to start practicing. In the midst of your poverty, you have to start practicing greatness. Because things won't stay the same. Because the story will change. Why? Because you are going to breathe properly in the midst of your trials. So don't let Satan whine you. It's a lie. You. It's not a big deal not to uh, that I only have two shirts. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Are you following? That's what the apostle is saying. Think it not strange. Like, is it, it's not a big deal. Are you following me now? Are we still together? And see your church. Yeah, just five members. It's not a big deal. Because it's really no big deal. Because one day the real problem will be that what? The crowd is too much. Overflow. That will be the real problem. Because it's not a big deal. You know the num- number is not a big deal because the numbers will come. So it's not a big deal. Are you following me? So don't think it is a big deal. This is, don't behave like this. Don't make a big deal out of your problems. Can you look at someone and say, don't make a big deal out of your problems? <laughs> say, now, small thing. Now, small thing. Small thing. Say, say, now, small thing. Being teeny, a small thing. Are you following me? You know I'm not motivating you, I'm teaching you the scripture. I'm, I'm not teaching you in language, in words you, will, you can relate to it. It's not a big deal. Are, you, are we together? Beloved, thinking it not strange because I'm the fair trial. I wish to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. Are you following me? So next time you are going through, ask us. No, it's not strange. Nothing strange is happening to you. Are you with me? Are you with me? Nothing strange is happening to you. It's not strange. You see, when you behave like this to Satan, he will leave you. Did, did he not eventually leave Jesus? He left him. Satan will go, he 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 will leave you. 
Yeah, you little know, thing, he doesn't even care about this. He doesn't even care. You see, can I talk to you? God hands over this life to those who don't really care about it. You didn't get me. The people God gives this life to, the wealth to, are those that don't really, that don't really want, that don't care about it, that it's nothing to them. They're not, pos- they're not chasing it. Are you following me? Are you with me? Shout hallelujah. You see, you know why it, it, it must not be a big deal to you? Why your days of poverty, your trials, your stuff, the things you are going to must not be a big deal? It's because when God eventually blesses you, it must also not be a big deal to release it to, to people. If your problem is a big deal now, when the blessings come, you say, ah, I, I suffered. I know how I suffered to get this thing. I can't, I, I can't, I, I can't give it any help. I have to also teach him to work hard. Shut up! You know, you are, you are still inside your poverty. Like all those lecturers. You say, in my class, A is for God, B is for my wife, C is for, you know those stupid, stupid things, say, C is for me. The remaining ones are for you. Like, how can A be for God? Because I go with A. <laughs> you hear them say, I know what I went through to get this PhD. Shut up! So, you see, lecturers who don't know anything, they are the ones who are, they are, they are t- stuff at the toughest. Oh man, Lego. Go ye, I want to go go ye one. Don't buy ye, you make it simple. They don't have it. They don't understand it. Are you following me? Praise God. Shout hallelujah. There was a, pro, there was a, pro, a professor that taught us in the university. Are you following me? Mm, materials. Materials. I can't remember his name right now. He's a very big professor. He was, he was even visiting to Exo that time. He was doing a lag everywhere. Very brilliant man. Are you following me? If you see his course, the way he teaches is very simple. Our professor, our, our, our bad professor, he will come to class and be teaching us like children. Very simple. Eventually, he was my supervisor. <laughs> Are you with me? He was my supervisor. We just went to give him one, one project topic. Very simple something. We went to ask him, what should we do? He said, just do something, just do something, just do something. When we now took, we now chose one we went to, I won't tell you, because it's a useless project to do. <laughs> <laughs> so when we did, when we when we when we went to show him when we were in the process, we now thought, okay, we we said we wanted to travel to Akure Futa to get some things. I said, why do you want to stress yourself? Just do 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 what you want to do. You see, but those who need your project to become doctor to have PhD, they say go to Saudi Arabia, go to Yobe, go and get your sample from Yugoslavia, because they need it to be something. Are you following me? Those who are ready something don't need you. Well, okay. What did that professor, what does he want to do with our project, with my project? These are senior, I can't remember, if I, if I call his name, if I can remember his name, he's very popular. Senior professor. No stress. Our project didn't stress us. We didn't spend, we spent very little amount of money. But those supervised by misters, Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> Which doctor? Some of them are still Mr. They are still trying to get their masters. You say it will be very hard. You, how many of you understand what I'm saying? Because they don't have it. You understand? So of them mule. So you see, <laughs> are you with me? It's a big deal to them. So they want to make it tough for others. So because God doesn't, God doesn't want you to be, to be that person who makes life tough for others. He makes you see what you. He wants you to see what you are going through as not a big deal, so that when the money comes, it's not a big deal to give others. Are you following me? You see, if I'm telling you to go and that these things I'm teaching you now, ah, if you know what I did to get it, you just say, go and read the Bible. Go and read. I can't teach you these things. They are too deep. Go and study the Bible for yourself so that you can really get it. I don't know it. I don't have it. Are you with me? Go hear me, no, me. You understand? You understand? I'm making it simple, making it plain to you because I have it so I can give it. Are you following my friends? So, God has to make sure you see your problems as not a big deal. Do you know people who have money and they feel if they have others that they won't appreciate the wealth that, you understand? That they will misuse it, that, they have, that people too also have to go through what they went through before they can. Do you know, you know those kind of behavior? That you, you know what I went through to build this house? Do you know what I went through to gather this wealth? That you must also go through the same. It's not, you don't have to. Why should you? 
The reason for your success, the reason for you getting it right, is so that those who are coming behind you won't have to go through the same things. Are you following me? If I spend five years to get these things I'm teaching you, I should teach you in a few hours. You don't need five years. Are you following me? So if, I've, if, I, if, if you have overcome so many things, you've gone through many things in life, many trials, many afflictions, you have now become someone that the person wants, wants, wants to be, that great person, you've come into wealth, into abundance. People don't need to go through the same things you went through before they have what you have. Are you following me? The reason why God made you go through what you went through and have what you have is so that he can, he can, he can fast track the journey of others. God does not have time to waste. Are you following me? Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Amen. So it's not a big deal. You know that people who think that there's a particular money that is too big for, to, for them to give somebody. Or there's something too big to, for them to give somebody. They suffer too much. And they, even though they are now rich, the suffering is still in their head. It's still in their brain. It's still in their heart. It's in their spirit. It's a big deal. Like, ah, 100k. Ah, why am I following 100k? The guy has 100 million in his account. Like, he doesn't have plan for it. But 100k is big. Like, on a whole 100k. How can I just transfer that somebody on a whole, a whole 100k? You follow? It's a big deal. He made a big deal of his suffering when he was suffering. So it's now also a big deal to give. Are we still together? Praise Jesus forevermore. So it's not a big deal, right? Is it a big deal? I know you don't have money yet. Is it a big deal? Things are hard. Is it a big deal? It's not a big deal. Because eventually, it won't be a big deal. It won't be a big deal. It will make sense. It will align. It will align. Are you following me? Nobody here will be small. Are you fo- I said nobody here will be what? Nobody here will be small. Nobody here will be miserable. Your life is not going to end the way it is going. Are you hearing me? That's not the plan of God. And that's why you have to behave properly in these days of trials. Are we together? Glory to Jesus. Shout hallelujah. It's not a big deal. I feel like I can stop teaching already and continue next week, but, but I'm not going to stop, even though I said glory. <laughs> like, I love, I love the answer. I love that it's not a, God really wants to, to say that it's not a big deal. Because some of you have made a big deal out of your problems, out of your troubles. God, see me now. See me now. All my mates, they are now married. God, see me now. See me now. All my mates now have a job. God, see me now. See me now. We see you now. What about God? See me now. See me now. All my mates are now dead. God, what, what about me? What about me? What like that? God, see me now. See me now. Some of my mates have run mad. God, what about me? When? People are wicked. <laughs> Christians are the most wicked people. <laughs> I mean, God changed our hearts. You'll be asking God why, when. You'll be asking God when. When you hear that your friend just bought a car. Is that when you say, God, when? God, when will you do my own? When will you do my own? But when you hear the news that your friend just died. The friend you're even older than by five years. With five years. You used to say, God, when? Like, God, when is my turn? I just heard that being paid just that. God, when is my turn? God, when? Favor me to when? Favor me with death. <laughs> you don't do that. Amen. So you have to stop asking those kind of questions. Stop thinking like that. Is not a big deal. Can you say my problems? The things I'm going through are not a big deal. Glory to Jesus. Move to verse 13. Let me try and see where I can close it. Let me try and close it. Then we'll pick it up next week. Glory to Jesus. Let me just do this first, Peter. Then we'll pick it up. I still have Romans and one of, and two other scriptures. But let me do first, Peter. I want us to go early. Today is our evening of worship. Like, you know we do worship every last Sunday of the month. Are you happy to hear that? So, we are coming back in the evening today like we always do. By 5.30 p.m. But today is not, we are not, it's not prayers and it's not teaching. It's just to worship the Lord. 
atmosphere of grace. Just please just keep inviting people and we are here to we are here to worship God, not enjoy ourselves. Amen. So I want everybody to be around for worship this evening. Amen. So the apostle says it's not a big deal, right? Then what did he now? So go back. So he says it's not a big deal. Don't think it's strange. He now said, instead of having this kind of attitude, where you are making a big deal out of your troubles, where you are making a big deal out of your problems, are you following? Where you are, where you are making a mountain out of your problems? He said, there's an attitude you must have. Okay? So what's the attitude? But rejoice. What's the meaning of but? It's comparing two things. You understand? You're, you're, let me hear. You're instead. So he said, that first attitude that I said, don't, don't, don't behave like that though. When you are going through problems, don't count it as a big deal. It's not a big deal. He said, let me show you how to behave. Let me show you the right attitude. He says, rejoice. Can you say rejoice? rejoice. Can somebody rejoice? Can you just rejoice? Can you? Rejoice! 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 We can rejoice! Hey! I said we can rejoice! In the midst of trials, we can rejoice. In the midst of problems, we can rejoice. We have a joy greater than problems. We have a joy greater than our, our many hardships. We have a joy that problems cannot overwhelm. We are not of this world. But from a different realm. This world is afraid of us. Our problems are afraid of us. Because when they come, they meet us in joy. We are a people of joy. Joy, joy, joy! 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 Joy! Oh, rada boko sabala di mamante kalabahai. Can you just pray the Holy Ghost? Pray the Holy Ghost. 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 Oh, Rado Kobe na na na. Erekele balatisa paha. Rokele ne 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 teke baha. Rokele ne 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 Thank you, Jesus, for this reality. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. He says, but rejoice. Can you tell someone, but rejoice? You see, it means that this way he has asked us to behave, are you following me? Is strange to the world. It's strange to our problems. Are you following? He says, but rejoice. 
Like take up a, a, a different posture, a different attitude. But rejoice. Listen, that your problems are now shocked. Like, is this guy okay? Why is he behaving like this? But rejoice. Like, but rejoice. Like, go lead you, like, lead you go rejoice. Like, but rejoice. Like, but rejoice. Like, look, look at your problems. Like, you say, you need this problem. I go rejoice on top of your head. <laughs> you this lack. I go rejoice on top of your head. Don't you think your problem wants to, want to, want to run away from you fast? It wants to leave you fast. Are you following me? Someone came to help to visit you. You didn't say, the person opened the door and saw you sitting down. You didn't say welcome. You didn't greet. You, didn't, you, just looking at the person. you didn't offer the person water. You, you were on a phone call. You were on a phone call. You were chatting. You were gisting. You understand? Somebody else came in. You were talking with the, with the person that just came in. You, you ignored that person completely. What will happen? Oh, my she left with Konipe Salo. Alex, what's that song? Sign down. I sat down. It will soon leave you. You see, many of you, your problems stay long because you are making a big deal out of them. I'm making a big deal. You got to worry. When luck entered, you say, hey, luck, welcome. You were offering it too many things. It's too comfortable in your house. Autant TV free. Autant Nico Wobo man you. Autant ça avec l'onge. Autant tes bed for water bed. Autant ici. Autant ouais ce que le déposé j'ai. Comme si non. Autant non font lack. Oh Nico man drôle tiens. You see that is what you do when you are making a big deal of your problems. You are making it comfortable to stay with you. Making it comfortable. It's, it will be comfortable in your house. You see. You must make your life uncomfortable for problems. Uncomfortable for, for hardship. And how do you do that? You tell it it's not a big deal. You don't welcome it. You see, when you behave like this, lack knows it's not welcome in your life. Afflictions know it's not welcome. Problems know it's not welcome. Oh, they have no tension. It's not a big deal. It says, but rejoice. Behave the way that thing does not expect you to behave. You see, let's say, for example, you were angry with someone. You understand? And you plan to go and meet the person and over Daleru. Because your, your mind is that when you see the person, the person will want to give you fire for fire. You understand? But you went to the person with that kind of anger and that kind of mindset. And you did do ballet. You be to do what you to do again. You understand? Don't let problems meet you at home. You understand? Don't let problems do what? Don't let them meet you at home. Behave contrary. You understand? The person that plan to beat up the other person, if the person does anyhow, make the person prostrate him. Hey, man, be no, I'm so sorry. Boy. You understand? He cannot, he has made a different behavior than he envisaged. You understand? He has thought that the person will behave in a particular way because he thought that the person, that's the way the person should behave based on what he wants to go and do. But then he behaves contrary. The person cannot longer carry out his intention. Are you following me? So he said, but rejoice. Behave contrary to your problem. Some of you behave your problem. You behave your lack. You don't have money, so the remaining 2K, you want to, you can't give somebody 500 out of it. You are behaving your lack. You don't have more than that 2K. If it was so finished, you have only 200. You behave your lack. You have 2K, eh? Somebody calls you, oh, bro. Ah, now only 2K I get, but me will share now. I'll send you 1K now. Oh, I'll send you 500. <laughs> Take and guide. If only, but you have 2K. You are not behaving your problem. Ah, Amy go, go, sing, go, go, Ilu, Le, go, Nigeria, Leo. The economy is very hard though. You are behaving your problems. Your lack has met you at home. You have just put on AC for your lack. You have just laid the bed for your lack. You have made it comfortable around you. <laughs> are you following me? But you know it is strange to the world, to the systems of this world, to spirit, evil spirit, when you don't have only, you have only 2K. Are you, that's all you have. And someone calls in that I am in need. Are you following me? 
and you can say, ah, this is no get to now need to care again, but me will share around. You know you have you have you have you have you have made luck the head to run mad. That this one is not this one is, this one is not our kind of person though. It's, it's like they sent us to the wrong address. I told that you see, you now you now completely kill that luck. When a person now says, in fact, now two k, you 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 didn't tell the person the money. The person will say, ah, do I beg? I need two k now now. I need two k. I beg. Help me. And you only have two k. You have destroyed the new when you send that two k. But you didn't even tell the person that you say you don't have. You say, ah, you need two k. Send me your account. And you send two k. And the only two k you get, Kai! Kai! Your luck will say, I miss road. Your luck will say, I miss road. This is not where they sent me to. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's another TY. Let me go and check. Let me address it. Why? Because you have behaved contrary to your problems. You have behaved contrary. Guys, you have to behave contrary to what? To your problems. Behave contrary. We have to start doing all this design on our shirts. So we have to start, we have to have a team that will handle those things. So that we can remember these teachings. Like we have a shirt. Behave contrary to your problems. You understand? When you see it, you just, ah, you remember the teaching without listening to it again. You just remember, I can't play about that. Count it. You, you understand? Cario. You understand? What's that one? Cairo. You, just, you understand? You just, when you're about to think, when the Guinea's government come to Colorier, you just pick up a shirt. You can wash it, you can wear it. And when you wear that shirt, you have won the spirit. You have won the spirit of the teaching. Kai. You understand? Guys, we need to look into it. I'm telling you, we need to look into this. Let's look into it. Let's start making all these things into shirts. Let's carry it around. Are you following me? That, that, you know, sometimes that evidence wants to come. It, it, it wants to come. You just pick up one of the shirts. Look on war. Anointed shirt. Look on it. Cairo, Cairo. I go still greet. I go greet. Cairo, Cairo, Cairo. I go greet. I go greet. Are you following me? So you have to behave contrary to your problem. Demola, do you understand? You have to behave contrary to your what? To your you have to misbehave. That's, that's misbehaving. You understand? Your problem must be that you are misbehaving. That is in Shiwawu. You understand? Because it is real Shiwawu in the system of the world when you don't have anything and you are sending all what you have to somebody else. That widow that gave, that gave what she had, or Shiwawu in the world system. You understand? That's, that is an, an anomaly. It's a misbehavior. So Peter is saying misbehave to your problems. Misbehave. Praise God. But rejoice. So what is the attitude here again? Rejoice. Rejoice. But rejoice as in as much as he are partakers of Christ's sufferings. He's saying that these things you are going through, are you following me? That is you simply sharing fellowship with the sufferings of Christ. Are you with me? It is you what? Sharing fellowship with the sufferings of Christ. This is what Paul was saying. says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Like, he says there's something sweet about having fellowship with the sufferings of Christ. You see? And you, you, fellowship with, you fellowship with the sufferings of Christ we don't come as you carrying a physical cross. We don't come as you being whipped. We don't, we don't come as you being spat upon. Are you following me? To come as you not having a job quickly. To come as you not having money in your account. To come as, you understand what I'm trying to say? To come as all of these things. You don't have a car, your family, you are going inside the rain, a lot of stuff. You understand? That's how it will come for you. So it says, you are having fellowship. Don't, don't, go, go, don't give me from that scripture. Go back to James. He says, you have impression with what? With the sufferings of Christ. Are you following me? Like, you know, you know what Peter is saying? He's saying that you are fleshing with Christ in the sufferings as though you were there when he was going through those sufferings. Like you're having a real koinonia with that fellowship of, of the sufferings of Christ. Because you see, how we need to flesh with the sufferings of Christ. Are you following me? Because that's office to produce an end. You see, Christ will not enter glory if he did not go through sufferings. Are you following me? It was his fellowship with sufferings 
that created the path for him into glory. Are you following me? Shout hallelujah. The Bible says he endured the cross. He said, because of the glory that was set before him, he endured the what? The cross, despising the shame. Are you with me? Praise God forevermore. So, you see, what Peter is saying that it's a privilege to suffer with Christ because we have glory in view. Are you following me? So, when next you are going through stuff, just say, I'm fellowshipping with what? With Christ in the sufferings. I'm partaking in the sufferings of Christ. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. I, I wish you together. Oh my God. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings. That when his glory shall be revealed. That what? When his glory shall be revealed. So there's a plan for the revelation of his glory. Hey, friends, can you hear me? There's a plan for what? For the revelation of his glory. But what comes before the revelation of his glory is what? Is his sufferings. And you will understand so. You see? The context of this revelation of his glory in relation to the fact that you are partaking of his suffering is talking about the fact that when his glory shall be revealed in your life, you will get it. Look at it. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, like you are partaking of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. That means that there's a plan for you to partake in the revelation of the glory of Christ. Are you following me? Let me say it in Yoruba. Are you with me? Like, God wants to reveal his glory through your life. Are you following me? Praise God. That there's a plan in the heart of God to reveal the glory of his son. To reveal the glory of Christ through your life. Are you following me? Look at you. When his grace shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. There are two joys stated here. Two joys, right? One joy that comes because glory has been revealed. Right? See it. You remember Thursday? The joy that comes because of what you are receiving. This is that joy here. Are you, are you following me? That you, that when grace shall be revealed, you may be glad with what? Exceeding joy. So there's a, there's a, there's a rejoicing, there's a joy attached to the revelation of God's glory in your life. Are you following me? But before this joy, he said there's another, there's a joy before this joy. He said, but rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering. Watch it. That there's a joy you must first exhibit, which is the joy that will help you to go through your tough times. And that's joy I'm talking about. Can't it all joy? He now says, you see, that the reason why you must have this joy as you go through tough times, as you go through trials, is because there's another joy waiting for you. The joy that comes as a result of the revelation of the glory of God. Oh, friends, are you with me? I wish you together. I wish you together. Amen. You see, God is so good. Can you say God is so good? Friends, you might be going through a lot, but God is so good. And He's so good to you. I'm telling you the truth. He's so good to you. Even what you are going through is for His glory. It's so that He can manifest His glory in your life. Are you with me? Praise God forevermore. Can you say God is so good? He's so good. You see, in the midst of all your sufferings, of all your trials, God has a plan to do what? To reveal the glory of Christ through your life. Are you with me? God has what? A plan to reveal the glory of Christ through your life. Every area of your life. Your finances, your health, your business, your career. Like he wants to reveal his glory. Are we still together? 
And it says that when he reveals that glory, there's a joy that will come with it. I was talking about this on Thursday. Are we still together? Amen. Can you hear me, my friends? Praise God forevermore. But you see, we're talking about our attitude in the midst of trial. That joy is that attitude that God wants us to have as we go through our trial. You understand why? Because eventually, we will have another dimension of joy when God begins to reveal His glory in our lives. Are you with me? But you see, God does not want us to be a weak people who can only rejoice when things are good. Are you following me? He wants us to be a strong people who can also rejoice when things are tough. Are you following me? So look at it. God does not just want you to have joy when his glory is revealed in your life. Are we together? God what? God does not just want you to have joy when his glory is revealed in your life. He also wants you to have joy in the midst of your trials. Don't forget, there's a joy that comes with the revelation of glory. Are you following me? That one, you are not commanded to have it. You will just have it because glory is not being revealed. Who will command you to rejoice? When you receive a call right now, oh, Tayo, you can, you, we are offering you a job, $20,000 per month and all of that. Before that call ends, another offer enters, $25,000. Before that one comes, they say, okay, we won't give you an equity with this company. Are they going to command you to rejoice? The joy is just what? Natural, spontaneous. So this, this, this second joy, that you may be glad also with existing joy, is a spontaneous, is a natural joy. Are you following me? That comes because glory is not being revealed. But there's a commanded joy. There's a, there's a, you, they are not, there's a joy they are commanding you to have. Are you following me? That joy is not natural. Who re, naturally, who rejoices when they are suffering? It's, it's an unnatural joy. So they are commanding you to have that joy. To rejoice when you are going through so, so that you can be able to participate and partake in the spontaneous joy that comes with the revelation of glory. Are you with me now? So, God does not just want you to have joy when His glory is revealed in your life. He also wants you to have joy in the midst of your trials. Look at it. Be it trials or glory, God wants joy to be a constant in your life. Are you following me? God wants what? God wants joy to be what? A constant in your life. That anywhere we catch this guy is full of joy. Are you following me? That anywhere we meet this guy is full of what? Joy. He's always rejoicing. Are you following me? Are you following me? If we meet this guy in the midst of trials, what is he doing? He's rejoicing. If we meet him in the midst of glory, what is he doing? He's rejoicing. If we meet this guy in a one bedroom apartment, what is he doing? He's rejoicing. If we meet him in a mansion, what is he doing? Is rejoicing. If we meet him with zero naira in his account, he has he has even borrowed money from Ope. They're already calling him up and down. Hello, come and pay your money from Pampe. <laughs> Are you they already say, come and pay your money, come and pay your money. Ezike, come and pay your, come and pay your money. Are you following me? He doesn't have money, he has borrowed money. But we catch him doing what? When there's one billion dollars in his account, what is he doing? Guys, God wants joy to be a constant thing in your life. He doesn't want to be a weak Christian. There must always be joy. He doesn't want you to be a Christian who only has joy when things are, are good, when things are smooth, when glory is being manifested. He wants to be a Christian who also manifests your man, who also has joy when things are tough in the midst of trials. That is a, an accurate Christian. That is accurate Christianity. You see, you cannot, we can't have a Christianity where we post our joy when things are tough. Are you following me? We now resume joy when, when it's time for testimony that God has done it. God doesn't, God doesn't want to be that kind of God to you. A God that you only rejoice to when he, is, when he has done it. You see, God does not want to be a God that has done it to you. He wants to be your father who, who perpetually enjoys joy from you. You see, God enjoys our joy. Are you following me? You see, when we are in joy, when we live in joy, we are giving God enjoyment. Are you following me? So, you see, when you pause your joy until God does it, until the, the until glory is revealed, you have paused the enjoyment that God should receive from your life. 
So that is why God wants joy to be a constant in our lives. So that whether it's trials or glory, we are found rejoicing. Can you say, I will be found rejoicing? I can't say, I will be found rejoicing. I will be found rejoicing. You must be found rejoicing. You what? You must be found rejoicing. Whether it's trials, whether it's glory, you must be found rejoicing. Can you look at someone and say, you must be found rejoicing? Must be found rejoicing. Your account is red. Your account is white. Your account is green. You must be found what? Rejoicing. You must be found rejoicing. Are you following me now, my friends? Shout hallelujah. Be it trials or glory, God wants it, well, God wants joy to be a constant in your life. You are not a slave to scarcity, no abundance. Are you following me? You are what? You are not a slave to scarcity or what? Abundance. You see, if you only rejoice when glory is revealed, but you cannot rejoice when things are tough, you are a slave to abundance. Your life is controlled by abundance. And Satan can control your life. Are you following me? Shout hallelujah. If the only time you can rejoice is when God has done hey, Everybody praise God. God has done it. To, we now see you fervent in church. You are a slave to abundance. You are a slave to God's provision. You are a slave to revelation of glory. You are a slave. Are you following me? When you can't rejoice when things are tough, you are a slave to trials. You are a slave to scarcity. You are a slave. It means your life, your joy is under, is under the control of circumstances. Are you following me? It means your life, your joy is controlled by what happens and what does not happen. Are you following me? You see, you must live a life that is powered from within. You must live a life that is not controlled by what happens around you. That is a glorious life. I said that is a glorious life. When you live a life that is not controlled by, by, by what is happening around you, it's a glorious life. Are you following me? Your life must be controlled and powered by the life within. Out of your belly shall flow what? Rivers of living waters. Why is the economy, deta- economy determining your life? Why is your lack determining your life? Why is what is happening around you determining your life? That is not a glorious life. You cannot be joyous when things are going well. We see you happy, you are just everywhere because things are fine. But when things begin to, things are not going well, you are ready like a cat thrown inside water. We can't see you again. You are a slave to scarcity and abundance. You follow me? You are not strong. God can't use you. Because you see, when Satan wants to manipulate your life, he only needs to control what happens around you. Are you following me? You see, if you cannot rejoice when things are tough and can only rejoice when things are good, are you following me? You are a slave. Are you following me? You are a slave to scarcity and abundance, you see? And Satan can control your life like that. Because what he needs to do when he wants a particular response from you is to determine what happens around you. Are you following me? You see? And if Satan can control your life, you know that you're already in trouble. So you must make it sure that you can't control my life. Because whether it is scarcity or glory, I am what? I am inside joy. Are you with me? Whether it is scarcity or abundance, I am rejoicing. Whether it is trials, whether it is sufferings or glory, I am rejoicing. I have the joy for trials. And I also have the joy for glory. Anywhere you see me, it is joy. I'm a child of joy. Can you say I'm a child of joy? I'm a child of joy. Because joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Are you following me? The only Spirit produces this fruit in our heart, in our spirit. And it does not have season. It does not have a season where it can produce or where it cannot produce it. So why does your own joy have a season? Why is your joy seasonal? It's because you are not yielding to the work of the Spirit in your life. Are you with me? If joy is a fruit of the spirit that it is, are you following me? It should not be a seasonal thing in your life. Are you following me? 
That, that's why the apostle is showing us that what? Even when things are bad, we can rejoice. And when glory comes, we can still rejoice. Why? Because this joy is produced by what? By the Spirit. And it has no season. It is not seasonal. You see, why should your joy be seasonal? Are you following? Why should your joy be seasonal? Are you saying that the Holy Spirit only has joy when there's glory, when things are going well? Are you saying that, like you, that the Holy Spirit also that is inside you is also crying and feeling so bad, doesn't want, to, doesn't feel like going to church, doesn't feel like talking to anybody when things are going bad? You, are you saying that's what the Holy Spirit feels? The Bible says it produces joy in our spirit, so it means that my joy can't be seasonal. It means that my joy is not, is not under the control of circumstances. It means that my joy is not under the control of Satan. Are you following me? Praise God. You see, this is a spirit-filled life. A spirit-filled, a spirit-led life. A spirit-filled life. Where you can have constant joy. Where joy is a constant in your life. Satan is afraid of this kind of life. This kind of life is so powerful. It will, it will bring down the head of the enemy. You follow me? Oh, guys, you must have joy. You must count it as joy. Don't worry. I'll say, I'll, I'll, not, I'll say as what joy is for you. Not, not today. Next week. We'll close now. Are you following me? You must count it as joy. You must have joy. You must have enough joy to make Satan cry. Are you following me? The Bible says, He who sits in heaven shall what? Shall love them. Shall love. He shall love. They were plotting against the boy. The Bible says, He shall love. Can you laugh at Satan? Laugh at him. Laugh at your problems. Laugh them to scorn. Are you with me? Joy must not be a seasonal thing in your life. Don't let me see you only rejoicing because you now have a new job. You are not coming to a church very well. You are not committed because things have started moving. But the moment we know that this person in church, you got the blessing, go back near. Don't let that be. How can that be your testimony? Your life is controlled by Satan. Ah, but boy, you church, go to church more for the past three weeks. Well, but I want this on salary. His business is not moving as usual again because that has is now the pattern of your life. So Satan can even control your work with God. <laughs> Satan can determine when you will go to when he wants to go to church very well. How many of you want to go? Because he knows that if he just touches your economy, he knows that God's things are paused. You will pause. You follow him. Guys, you must live a spirit filled life. Are you with me? You must do what? Joy is constant. It must be a constant in your life. God wants that joy to be constant in your life. You follow me, my friends. Glory to Jesus forevermore. So God does not, God does not just want you to have joy. Are you following me? When His glory is revealed in your life, He also wants you to have joy in the midst of your trials. Be it trials or glory, God wants joy to be constant in your life. You are not a slave to scarcity and abundance. Amen. Are we still together? Can I talk to you? You see, a lot of us, <laughs> friends, can you hear me? A lot of us want to lay hold on the joy that comes with the revelation of glory. Are you still with me, my friends? Shout hallelujah. A lot of us want to what? We want to lay hold on, we want to have access to the, to the joy that comes with what? With the, reve- with the revelation of glory. But we don't want to have anything to do with the joy of suffering. Are you following me? You are a liar. You are lying. Are you following me, my friends? You see, if you are going to have access, praise God. If you are going to have access to the joy that comes with the revelation of glory, are you following me? You must participate in the joy, are you following me, that comes with sufferings. Are we together? Shout hallelujah. Let me say the, the way I wrote it down. If you have not rejoiced in the days of trials, you have no right to the joy that comes with the manifestation of glory. You understand? I said what? If you have not rejoiced in the days of trials, you have no right to the joy that comes with what? With the manifestation of glory. 
Because you see, you can only, you can only be glad with exceeding joy when glory is manifested because you have rejoiced as a partaker of his suffering. Are you following me? So, if you want to have the right, to have the right to rejoice when glory is manifested, are you following? that means you are really experiencing glory in your life. To have a right to that glory, that joy, you must embrace joy in the days of your trials. It has to be joy. It has to be joy all through. Glory to Jesus forevermore. Let, 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 let me close. I'm going to verse this. Let me close it. Go to verse, verse 14. If you be reproached for this name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of God and of, for the spirit of glory and of God is set upon you. On their part is evil spoken of, but on your part is glorified. But let, no, let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evil doer, or as a busybody, in other men's matter. So you have to be sure that when you are suffering, you are actually in the will of God. Are you following me? Don't, don't be a believer who is not doing God's will. And you announce of your hands, hey, it's God, it's, it's Christ. It's not Christ's suffering. No. It's, if you are not obeying God, if you are not in the will of God, you are suffering. You are suffering in vain. Are you following me? He said, don't suffer as a mother, as a thief. These are people that are not in the will of God. They are not doing the will of God. If you suffer like this, you have suffered in vain. It will not lead to any glory. If you like, try to rejoice in it, it will not lead to glory. Are you following me? Praise God forevermore. So, you have to be sure that even in the midst of your sufferings, of your trials, you are obeying the Lord. Are you following me? You are obeying the Lord. You are doing it. So you are following Him. That's when you are sure that what this your, this your suffering, even as you rejoice, will lead to glory. So don't suffer anyhow. Don't go and waste suffering. No. <laughs> the suffering that is even, this, you see, that you are even in the will of God and you are suffering. And you are following God, you are being God. If you don't rejoice, you can waste suffering. You have wasted suffering. Not, not to now talk of you are disobedient and you are not suffering. That is a real waste of suffering. <laughs> you have wasted suffering. You have wasted suffering. And I start thinking, you have to be obedient. Obey God, love Him, do His will, so you not suffer in vain. Amen. Let me close verse 16. You see, you see, this is another thing. Yet, if any man suffers as a Christian, can you say as a Christian? As a child of God, obedient, loving the Lord, trusting in Him. Are you following me? Let Him not be ashamed. But let him glorify God on this behalf. Let him what? Let him not be ashamed. You see? Another thing your days of trial wants you to do is to be ashamed. You are ashamed. Like, because you don't have a car yet, you are ashamed. Because you don't have a job yet, you are ashamed. Satan wants you to be ashamed. There's no need for shame. Can you, can you say no need for shame? Can you say don't be ashamed? Say if you are suffering as a Christian, don't be ashamed. Are you following me? He said, don't be ashamed. What is the shame there? Okay, I only have two shares presently. Why should I be ashamed? Because you see, if you are ashamed, you are not rejoicing. Rejoicing and shame are not together. They can't go together. Are you following me? People who are ashamed, what do they do? They hide. They hide, right? If you are ashamed, you just, I don't want anybody to see. You are ashamed. You, are, you, can, you, you can't use only who is ashamed rejoicing. Are you following me? You must, you must kill shame. Are you with me? You must do what? You, you must make sure there's no shame. And as brothers and sisters, we must try not to, you must ensure you don't put your brothers to shame. And you must help them to not be put to shame. Are you following me? Do what you can, because you see, one thing problems can do is to put a man to shame, to want to make a man ashamed. Are you following me? So you personally, personally as a Christian, you must make a vow not to be ashamed. Are you following me? As a brother to a Christian, are you following me? You must make a vow to make sure that your brother, that you will not make your brother ashamed. Are you following me? That you will not make your brother what? Ashamed. You, you must also make a vow to make sure that I will make sure my brother is not ashamed. There are two different things though. You must, you must make a vow not to make him ashamed. You must not be, one, you must not be the one saying, all oh, your mates already have a job now. What are you doing to your life? It cannot be you. You must, not, you must not be the one saying it. Are you with me? Are you with me? You must not be the one saying it. Ah! You are still in this one room. Hey! After five years. Ah! A meeting so. You must, you, must not, you must not be one saying it. You are putting your brother to shame. You must not be the one what? Saying it. 
Are you following me? Eh, oh, me oh, tini, oh, tini moto. Ah. Ha. Oh, God. It must not be what? It must not be the one saying it. It must not be heard from you. And you must not say it with other people. Otherwise, you are putting your brother to shame. Are you following me? That's the vow that you must make that I will not make my brother ashamed. Are you following me? Then what's the second vow about you? That I will make sure that my brother is not ashamed. What's the meaning of that? Your brother does not have money. What can you do? What you share with him so he'll not be ashamed of his lack. He doesn't have a shirt. Share with him. You, you understand that you are out there for your brother. So that you'll not be ashamed. Are you following me? Praise God forevermore. You are out there for him. You are there for him. You care. You have money, but he doesn't have. How do you make sure he's not ashamed? You share. You have to stretch out your hand to your brother. You, you have to notice your brother. Ah, but boy, he trusts that come on my to my way. Just one trouser, one trouser, one trouser. I've made a vow that none of my brothers will be ashamed. What do you do? You buy him some pairs of trousers. You are, you are making a vow that you make sure your brother is not ashamed. Are you following? Praise God forevermore. So we must defeat shame in our days of trials. One of the things trials want to bring, actually want to bring, our heart want to bring is, is shame. But we have, you, you personally have to make a vow, you yourself, that I will not be ashamed. Are you following me? And really as you live in joy, shame will die. There won't be shame. Are you following me? Then as brothers, we must make a vow that we will not make our brothers ashamed. Are you following me? And again, that we will make, we'll make another vow that we will make sure that our brother is not ashamed. So we are dear for them. We are looking out for them. We are providing for their needs. We are supplying their needs. Are you following me? And you are providing in such a way that it's not, you know you can give somebody a gift and person that shame is fuels his poverty. You can give somebody a gift in a dishonoring way. You see, when you are giving your brother stuff, do it in a way that is honoring. They, you must not let them feel their lack. Do it as a king. Don't take a shirt that you cannot use again in your life and give it to your brother. Are you following me? Take a shirt that you are still using that, you, that is, is even one of your best shirts. Are you following me? And don't give it to them casually. Wash it, iron it. Are you following me? Fold it. Give them properly. Put it in a good nylon. Give them gifts, gifts as a king. Tell them thank you for the privilege to even be able to give to them. Don't make them ashamed. Make sure they are not, make a vow that your brother is not ashamed. You see, no member of this house must suffer lack. Are you following me? And that's why you yourself must open your mouth to talk. Is a, is a, is a church, is family. Don't go through your problems alone. Are you with me? Guys, we must make sure that what? None of us was suffers was lack. Are you with me? On your part, you have to speak out. Speak to your brothers, speak to your sisters, speak to your leaders. Are you following me? And again, on your part, you have to look out. Open your eyes and see. Can you open your eyes and see? Can you open your eyes and see? You can see that that brother's shirt is fading. You can see that that brother is like, this guy doesn't have money. Can you say, open your mouth and ask? This is also twofold. You, that you are going through it, open your mouth and ask your brothers. Are you following me? And you also, <laughs> open your mouth and ask your brothers how they are doing. You understand? Call your brother, ask him, how are you doing? How far? How things? So you, still, you still get back. You get back. You get back. How far? How levels? Are you following me? Number one, open your eyes and what? And see. Open your eyes and see. See that brother. When he first came, his, his stomach was big. But now his stomach is getting flat. A bit in pa. A bit in pa. <laughs> open your eyes and see. Open your eyes and see. It's only one shoe. It's open your eyes and see. Open your eyes and see. Are you following me? Open your eyes and what? And see. And open your mouth and what? And ask. Open your mouth and ask. Ask, how can I be open? What can I do? What are you going through? And open your ears to the Lord. Open your heart to the Lord. The Lord sometimes ministers the needs of our brothers to us. But sometimes we are too self. We are caught up in our own problem. We don't even hear the Lord. You see? But without, without the Lord ministering, are you following me? It's a normal thing for you to just minister to your brothers. Are you following me? And how do you, how do you, how do you minister to them? How do you, how, how, how are you sure you need to minister to them? Number one, it is doctrine. Are you following me? And how do, how do, you, how do you know the people who need it? Number one, they themselves have spoken. Are you following me? Friends, are you hearing me? They themselves have what? 
have spoken. They've, uh, they've called their brothers. They've spoken to their brothers, to their leaders. They've spoken. It's the church. It's family. Are you following me? Then also you yourself, you've observed. You've seen. You've opened your eyes to see. It's like this, this my brother, this, this guy is not, is not, is not joy. When I see him in church again, it's not, it's not the way he used to be. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know there's a way you can know that somebody's going through stuff to their face. Like, you know, normally in church, there's a way they used to look happy, there's a way they greet people, there's a way they, you understand. Even though some people can hide their problem, but don't hide your problem in this church. You will die alone if you hide it. So, you know that this guy is not looking so great. He's not lively again. You're already observing something. That, that was what Joseph did. The Bible says, in that scripture, that Joseph went to the prison, those guys, and he looked at him, you know, he said, he saw that, why is your countenance full? Now, why are you sad? He observed them. So look, open your, can you just open your eyes and see? Say, open your eyes and see me. Say, open your eyes and see me. See your brother, see them. Then open your mouth and ask them. Is there something they need? Are they, are they even coping in this situation? Like, what's up? What can I give you? Do you understand? Do you understand? Say, open your mouth and ask me. Let's, let's reverse it again. You yourself, you must open your mouth and what? And ask your brother. Ah, tell your offer. Money to kill. You understand? You understand? Say, open your mouth and ask me. The only thing I'm saying now is that you, you must not be ashamed to ask. Now you are I, I need one share to ask. Oh, I want share to money, one thing, feed one thing. Your bang one share is come. You understand? Talk about bang one shoe. Bang one bata come, money bata come. Open your mouth and ask. Say, my brother, open your mouth and ask me. I am, I am here for you. I'm walking because I'm walking because of you. Say I'm walking because of you. I can't hear you say. Say I'm walking because of you. I'm any money because of you. <laughs> because of you. Build me. Can you say build me? Say build me. Build me. I pay the bills. I pay the bills. Understand? No shame here. No shame here, right? No shame here. No shame. No shame. You understand? No shame. Shout hallelujah. You see, when we live like this, no matter the trials, no matter the hardship, our brothers won't be ashamed. We won't be ashamed. We will be able to live in joy. And we are going to eventually see what? The glory of God. I'll pick it up from here next week by God's grace. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name.